Hey guys, it's Anne. Welcome to my home worm farming channel. If you're looking for an active, friendly worm community, you are in the right place. Today, we're going to take a look in on everybody's favorite, Blue, my 55-gallon worm bin that was made from taking one whole 55-gallon barrel, chopping it in half, and then sticking the ends together again. And I do have a video for that. It is the first one on the playlist for the 55-gallon barrel. So today we're going to do a bit of a harvest. Um, if you're new here, I generally use blue as the surface for which I dry out other bins. So whenever a bin is done and the castings need to dry out to get sifted, I dump them over here on blue on his finished part so that it has more surface area so that I can get some good clean castings and don't have quite so many pumpkins and whatnot growing in my garden when I use them in the spring. So this is what I do. This is a quarter inch, I'll put the millimeters up top, screen, and I bought these off of Amazon. I've had them for over five years now, and uh, they are showing absolutely no sign of stopping. I highly recommend them, and the link to all the different sizes are in my Amazon links below. So what we're gonna do here is take a handful at a time, and run it through the screen. Now this is dry enough that the worms are all gone. All of the cocoons have probably hatched if there were any. And we're just gonna take all these big chunks and we're gonna throw them into the business end of blue. So they get recycled. Oops, isopod. So I'm just gonna keep doing this until I reach uh, a point where it is either too wet to sift or I'm running into worms. Now, in the event that you did want to capture the cocoons, I would recommend using the next size down, which is a sixteenth of an inch, which is only about a millimeter and a half. And even then, you will probably still get some of the um, small co cocoons from the blue worms. They have just insanely tiny little cocoons. European night crawlers and red wigglers, they all have you know, decent sized cocoons, but honestly, the little blue cocoons, uh, they are very difficult to get out. So if you're hoping to catch every single one of the little worms, then um, hopefully you don't have any blue worms in your bin. With that being said, I love my blue worms. I'm not saying anything bad about blue worms. I'm just saying that um, they are very tiny. You'll never use them for fishing worms. Uh, but they do a fabulous job of turning garbage into fabulous garden compost, which is what we're doing here. Now I'm taking the finished compost here and I am putting it into a barrel or a uh, bin. And I will keep that at a decent moisture and I'll even give it a little bit of worm chow or maybe a piece of fruit every once in a while, just in case there are those cocoons in there. And also keeping the moisture and keeping a little food in there keeps the bacteria happy so that they can hang out and be happy on their little, I don't know, vacation uh, until I'm ready to use them in my potted plants or in my garden in the spring. Some of the stuff in here has probably been through multiple times. Here's a peach pit. It's broken open, little piece of mulch. Don't know how that got in there, but that's totally fine. The worms and their friends will get along and get to it sooner or later. We're not in a hurry. If you are in a hurry though, you can just take this and put this outside in your outside um, compost pile and then you won't be bothered by seeing all the big chunks. I'm probably going to get about 10 gallons. I'll put the metric up top there. And I'm looking like I'm getting probably about two thirds of the harvest here. About a third of it's going back. Sometimes it's 50-50, sometimes it's better. Must have had a dead orchid or something. There's a piece of Leica. That will never break down, so that's just gonna come out. And 
and I just kind of scrub it against the screen here. In the event this was a little bit more moist and I was not trying to uh, bother the cocoons, I definitely wouldn't press very hard. I would just do the shaking part. This also gives me a good opportunity to find any stickers that I missed when I put the food in the bin to begin with. The worms do eat around it, so it's not a problem. That's about all that I'm going to harvest right now, and now we are going to start moving the wedge down. This, if, this part is the finished part. This part is sort of older, but in process, and then the far end over there is where I feed. And everything moves this way every time I feed. Things kind of collapse down on themselves when they are being composted. And so the mass is reduced, it gets turned into worm bodies, carbon dioxide, ammonia, you name it. As it gets eaten, it gets physically reduced, which means there's more space over here for me to move things over and stack them up higher, which means there's more room for me to feed at this end. All right, let's get to it. If you ever have any questions at all, feel free to put them below. I do try to get to all of the, the questions. And uh, if there's something that I don't know, I will refer you to somebody else that I may know has more experience. Someone did ask me about raising breeding worms, and I did refer them over to Mimi, who does it for a living, and also the Garden and Worm Lady, who does do that for a living. And so, and Northeast Worms is also another place that has a YouTube channel, but also sells worms. I just do this for my, my own household and my own family. And so the way that I do things is not based on making more worms faster. My whole process is based on making more castings faster. I need them to eat my garbage so that I can have soil amendments for my plants. So if your goal is to uh, grow them to sell the worms themselves, I probably don't have the best practices here. Most of my worms are pretty small. There's only a few here at the finished end, but they stay pretty small, but the population stays very high. As I understand it, if you want to sell worms, you need to make the population low so that the worms get bigger. Also, for the most part, I'm feeding them kitchen scraps and Amazon boxes, cereal boxes, things like that. I do feed worm chow from time to time to supplement, you know, during the winter when there's kind of not that much in the way of uh, vegetation that I can feed them. But for the most part, I'm doing this for the castings. Now we're getting to the middle part. You can see it is way wetter here. And although you can still see some scraps, things do look pretty finished here and we're almost to the middle. But the moisture is still pretty high, so the worms will continue to hang out in here, even though there's not a lot of food. I'm not really sure, I'm, the worms aren't telling, 
you know, why they will stay in a place that doesn't have that much food. Um, I am suspecting it is because it is nice and comfortable and uh, is the proper moisture for them and they're happy. All right. Well, ow. Dang it. Uh, yeah, the reason I'm wearing my gloves is because I do have an injury <laughs> and I just jammed it. Ow. Okay, so I'm going to move you down and we can get working on the business end of this bin. Alrighty, here we are at the finished bin, or the finished end of the bin. You see all these dry crumbs here. That's what we just harvested. And so now we're going to start taking a look in on the worms. Woo! Worm ball. Good worms. Look at that. Hanging out in what looks to be some junk mail and some tomato skins, which for some bizarre reason, they do take for ever to to finish up so i'm going to kind of break their party up a little bit there sorry worms it's always nice to be polite to your worms and give them encouragement after all they do work for you all right so moving things over taking the big chunks moving them to the end gives it you know keeps it out of my sifter bananas stems take forever and that, I'm okay with it for taking forever this is actually the rhubarb stem from probably three months ago um, whatever kind of rhubarb I had was not liking where it was planted so I did give pieces away but then there was still lots of rhubarb so the worms got to eat the rest so I'm gonna move all that over Maybe this winter I'll remind myself to do the uh, plastic welding and get that hole fixed up. Two-year-old pumpkin stem there. Okay, Let's see what else we got going on in here. The diffused worm ball. I feed these guys about once every three weeks. With it being garden season, uh, it's been really busy here. And uh, honestly, there hasn't been a lot of time to do it more often. So the worms don't seem to mind. I make sure they have lots of bedding and they are perfectly happy. That's one of the things that you don't have to feed as big as I do. Everything's sort of relative to your size of bin. And in the event that you don't have a lot of food one time, it's totally fine just to give them wet cardboard or, you know, you don't even have to shred it up like I do. I have an entire playlist called the lasagna bin where I didn't shred paper or anything. I just laid down cardboard in layers and the worms still managed to get into it. And really not that slower either. Okay, so they're doing a great job. Can you imagine how many worms are in here? They're, oh man, I just messed up my avocado. But that's what was going on there. There's a little flesh in there. And they do, they just like to be snuggled all up inside those avocados. Party in the avocado. Sorry, I'll put you guys back where you can privately have your avocado party. All right. Now we're getting into the end that should have the newest food over here. Running into some big chunks. Mangoes. Still seeing some paper that's not processed at all. There are no holes in this bin. And uh, all it's kind of sloped this way. And so, oh, dang it, another avocado. I need to pay attention to what I am doing. Sorry, guys. All right, we'll put you over there. So yeah, they are happy. In fact, I need to order some more Florida avocados. I'm down to just using the ones that come in the grocery store. You can see how big those pits are. The avocados are this big, it's nuts. You can have a meal just in avocados. If you like avocados that much, and I do, all right? I could easily become mostly a vegetarian 
if there was avocados involved. All right. So the very, very end, move everything over. And oddly enough, even though this is piled up super high right now, by the time we come in here the next time, this will probably be lower than that end over there that we just harvested from. That's how much it compresses over time. So in less than a month, this will be reduced in half between the, the worms, the isopods, which you can, you can see I've got all different kinds of bin critters here that are helping shred the paper and uh, make it easier for the worms to get at. All right, good job. Now, let's get to the part where we're going to feed, give them a bunch of bedding and a bunch of food. That is two gallons of shredded cardboard that is just wet. This actually hasn't been aged. I have a very, I came across a, uh, a bag of food that I had left here in the basement for about three weeks. Uh, it is super rotten. So that's going to go over here first, and then we're going to kind of make a, a lasagna feeding so that that super rotten food gets covered up fast. Okay. I'm going to let that kind of sink in a little bit, and I'm going to get some more bedding. Okay. There we go. Hopefully nothing will be able to smell that. Then this is their real feeding. They're going to get some macaroni, some peppers, and uh, that's about it. I think tomatoes, macaroni, onions. I have actually been putting my super hots in the outside bin just because I don't want to end up touching them. I know that worms do not feel capsation the way that we do. But uh, it kind of occurred to me one time after being in the bin that even though it doesn't matter if I feed them hot peppers because they don't care, I touched it later and I cared a lot. My fingertips were burning and I couldn't figure out why. And that is because I fed them super hots. Bad Ann. Okay, so this is their feeding. More bedding. This is the actual prepared bedding. It's got the coconut flour and the grit in it. You can see the little speckles of grit there. I know a lot of people sprinkle their grit on the top of the food, but I will forget nearly every time, so I add it to the bedding so I can't forget. Okay, I think I've got all of that covered up there. Now, if you have any questions about anything I'm doing here or any of the products that I use, Feel free to ask any questions you want to, and then also check out this description below. There's a playlist for this bin if you want to watch it from the beginning, from when I made it, all the way up till today, if you wanted to go back and binge watch Blue. All right, guys, well, if you liked the video, give it a muddy thumbs up. If you're not a member of my worm family, click that subscribe button, and if you want to know what I'm doing when I'm doing it, ring the bell icon, and you will get a little notification of when I'm doing things. All right, guys, thanks for hanging out with me and my worms, and everybody, have a good day.